My name is Nancy Rexford. I'm the guest curator for this show, Her Best Foot Forward, a show about women's shoes in historic Northampton and Northampton, Massachusetts. When you do any exhibition, you, you're limited by the sorts of things that survive. Ordinary clothing doesn't often survive. The genes of everyday life, um, the genes of the 18th century or the 19th century, if they'd worn them, they, they're very, very rare. What usually survives is fancy dress clothing and um, wedding shoes. And that is still, however, quite revealing because it gives you an insight into what women were supposed to be. So in the case of uh, shoes, they're particularly revealing about whether women are supposed to be public creatures or not. And in the early 19th century, there was a big emphasis on women as indoor creatures, as the angel of the house. And today, of post-women's liberation, that seems kind of limiting. But in fact, in the early 19th century, it was a step forward because women had not been the mistress of the house. It was always the master of the house who was master of the house. The women's indoor shoes are really divided into two categories. Shoes in which you could be seen by people other than your family, we'll call them public shoes, and shoes that you shouldn't be seen in by anybody but your family. Um, private shoes. Private shoes were like our bed bedroom slippers today. Boudoir slippers is the most common term. And boudoir slippers were often very, very pretty. And I've seen them in exhibitions put under ball dresses. And, um, but they should never have been seen outside the house. And the reason was is that they didn't have any fastenings. A woman who went outdoors was expected to have shoes which laced or buttoned or tied on uh, in some way, to wear outside a shoe that slipped on and off suggested that you perhaps were a little too quick to slip your shoes and everything else off. Uh, those shoes were loose and the woman who wore them outdoors might be seen as a loose woman. Now that actually changes in the early 20th century and it becomes okay to wear what we would call pumps outdoors. In 1916, the shoe lexicon, which was the dictionary of shoe terms put out by the manufacturers defined the word pump as a kind of slip-on shoe that women had begun to wear out on the street um, because they were being influenced by those women who wished to drag a boudoir suggestiveness into the streets. And then in outdoor shoes, if they were so light, if the, if the soles are really not much wide, uh, thin, uh, thicker than shirt cardboard, and the uppers are made of cloth, then how ever did they manage when so many streets were not paved? So we're showing some of the shoe accessories that would help you cope with that. And uh, one of them is a leather clog that was worn with an 18th century shoe, just enough to keep your heel from sinking in the mud. Another one is called a patten, which is a shoe a lot like a sandal today with a wooden sole, but it's all raised up on an iron ring, and that would keep you out of the horse manure and whatever else might be contaminating the streets that you had to walk through. So it's things like that that women were forced to wear when they went outside, and naturally you were, you were discouraged. Frances Trollope, who came to the United States in the late 1820s, remarked that American women never wear sensible shoes or boots, and they are shocked at the sight of uh, substantial cotton stockings, and they walk out in all weathers with just a thin slipper that wouldn't repel as much moisture as might bedew a primrose. And indeed, the surviving collections bear this out. I think there are three pairs of early 19th century boots in America that I think may have been worn here. That's exactly what the advantage is uh, today. You can, if you want, if you have an occasion, wear a very impractical shoe that's very thin or has a very high heel, but it's not your only choice. So that we can have a shoe for every occupation and for every mood. So we can be impractical once in a while, but we're not forced to be uh, angels in the house every moment of our lives. Why is it important? to save our material culture, in this case shoes or ladies' fashions. Isn't that a frivolous thing? Why should anybody care? And I've only been able to come up with one really good answer. The human conscience um, ne is, needs to develop as part of the imagination. If you can never imagine that, it's, that somebody else experiences life differently from your, your way of experiencing it, then 
you will always be the only reference for reality. You will never understand what life is like for anybody else. But when you look at these shoes, you can't escape the fact that for the people who wore them, life was indeed very different. And you try to put yourself in those shoes. And walking in the other person's shoes is the metaphor we still use today for being able to look at another person's point of view so that we can learn how to be tolerant and all to live together.